I had a massive accident oh. where the glass of my car, a truck hit the car and the glass of the car went into my face mostly. I saw the horror where when they did a surgery on me, they took out 67 glass pieces. Yes, I know. <laughs> At that time, you know, I had discussed it and said that, you know, I've cut myself up like this, then they would have said, oh, oh, you know, let's sign somebody else. Yeah, there was a lot of judgment back then. I think any 90s kid would remember what and who Mahima Chaudhary was. So yeah, I'm welcoming her on Pink Villa. Thank you Mahima ma'am for doing this because uh, I know you guys don't do so many interviews. Thank you for having me. So I really want to know like, you know, people miss you around, miss having you around, seeing your work. Uh, what is keeping you away from trophies right now? Uh, frankly, there isn't anything coming my way uh, that is worth doing. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. And uh, then you find another, you know, now with actors, the good thing is that there is a new model, uh, this wonderful model where you can be part of uh, uh, lives of the people who love you and you can do live events and do shows and events and promotions and endless things. So I've been keeping myself busy with that. And of course, you have a child to raise and they say you need an entire village to raise a child. That. I'm a single parent. So it becomes all the more difficult. Yeah. yeah. No, but you know, when you started, when you made your debut, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Pardes was the was the debut. Yes. For you, right. Uh, you became an overnight sensation post that because, I mean, today people who film ke gaane ho ya wo film ki baat ho karte hi. Yeah. Uh, uske baad bhi aapne kafi projects kiye, but do you think that somewhere uh, the industry couldn't give you the kind of roles you really deserve? Do you think, I think that? they gave me a lot, but yeah, I did have, you know, the lockdown period that you're having in your life right now and you're, you're having to stay away from work. I had this soon after my first and second film, after I did Pardes and the next film was Dark the Fire where they, I had like a double role, which was a huge thing uh, at that time for a newcomer to do and it was successful. Um, and I was working on Ajay and Kajal's uh, home production at that time with Prakash Jha, Dil Kya Kare and uh, in Bangalore on the way to the studio I had a massive accident oh. where the glass of my car, a truck hit the car and the glass of the car went into my face mostly. I thought I was dying and I went to the hospital at that time. No one even picked you up and took you to the hospital. But the thing is uh, that it's only after reaching the hospital much later when my mother came and Ajay came and they went to discuss that I got up and I saw my face in the mirror because I was like, why are they making such a fuss? Because I said, Prakash, let's go. Nothing happened. I'm fine. And he says, no, no, we'll relax. We we'll come back and do the schedule. I was mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. I have just one day. So let me finish it. And I saw the horror where when they did a surgery on me, they took out 67 glass pieces. Yes, I know. <laughs> so I had to, uh, they had to, uh, I, I get teary when I talk about this even today because it was, uh, whatever it is, the face is, is, it was not about my career. It was about, you know, it's your, your introduction to anything in life that's related to, relate to you and all of that. And I had to be with stitches like staples and stay indoors without sunlight. They blacked out my home. Uh, windows and uh, I didn't look at myself and uh, there was no mirrors in the house but there was no sunlight even lights which had UV rays I couldn't have in the house so that the marks don't stay there were a lot of films that I had lined up for myself to be part of during that time which I had to let go I didn't want people to know because during that time people were not very supportive if at that time you know I had discussed it and said that you know I've cut myself up like this, then they would have said, oh, oh, uska tuchera ho gaya. You know, let's sign some DM. Yeah, there was a lot of judgment back then. Yeah, today, everybody is a lot more evolved and you get a lot more support. 
I remember um, nobody was allowed on the set once I got back to shoot because I was still healing. And there was a song, uh, Yad Pia Ki Aane Lagi, and Neeta Lula was the uh, designer. designer. And she yeah. said, uh, Mahima, you must get back. It's okay, we'll take long shots. And I, I, I used to be shaking. I did a, a photo shoot with uh, Gautam Rajadhaksh. And, you know, my jaws, uh, you know, it used to shiver. I used to shiver. It's a horrifying experience, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, you don't want to do it. And she said, no, no, you're looking fine from this angle. And I was like, I just don't want to shoot. And we shot that and that's how I began doing long shots in my held up films and we released them and I uh, slowly got my confidence back and it slowly started healing and then uh, Akshay said why don't you be part of uh, Dharkan, do a song and then be a part of this film and I started picking up guest appearances and those became hits and Bhagwan became a hit and then Yetera Ghar Mera, then the other films started coming. So yes, it did look like, because I was so silent about it, it did look like, where did she go? Yeah. yeah. I was hiding, I was in lockdown. But I think I braved it out and it was because of my family. And now when I look after mummy, I only think of that, that how she healed me. Not so much physically, but emotionally. And it boosted my morale and said that people face, uh, you know, greater challenges than this. And then you must go back to doing what you were doing. You know, I'm so glad that you did come back and you did, you know, you did not let that emotion suck you in and you know, just just lose confidence because that is very very easy when, especially when you are in showbiz. But uh, now a little ha now a little happy memory we'll talk about. But days we have to talk about it. Um, Subhash Ghai ke saath aapne apni first film ki. I mean, you know, he is known to be such a great director. Yeah. Tell me a little. Tell me how did it all happen for you? How did you sign that movie? Did you ever expect that it will become such a huge hit? Matlab, aaj bhi do dil mil rahe hain. Matlab. I get called to about, if I do about a uh, hundred events in a, in a year, 50 are by those people who were uh, romancing during Pardes and they're like, you know ma'am, we want to ha have you at our event because, you know, do dil mil rahe hai, me and my wife. <laughs> because you know, at that time, romance chupke chupke hi hota tha. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that, that that film has really pulled me through my entire life, I must say. Even today, <laughs> the first recollection uh, I have of my daughter, even thinking that I was an actor, was when she was five years old. And in school, she was part of the group that was dancing to I Love My India. And she came home and she said, Mama, I'm dancing to the song you sang. Like, no, Mama doesn't sing. But Mama danced to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the little kids today obviously don't know I'm an actor. They haven't seen, you know. Uh, it, it's Alia Bhatt and Katrina Kaif and all that. So I, I, when they see me, they understand that I did that song because they are dancing to that on 15th of August or Republic mm. Day. So that is my biggest connect with them. Ma'am, because you were from the outside, right? How was how did the industry welcome you post the success of your movie? Was it that suddenly everyone was like, you know, like industry mein ho jata hai, this is the new girl who has come on the block. What were your kind of struggles that you went through? Uh, that, that struggle I didn't have. Uh, my struggle began post my first film. <laughs> if you know, you want to ask me what my struggle, my struggle began post my first film, post a success, post, uh, you know, Jubilee of so many uh, weeks. So in the beginning, it wasn't uh, much of a struggle because I did a very, very uh, good commercial, Pepsi commercial with Amir and Ishwarya. So I got that recognition. And post that, I did uh, several other commercials and I was one of the top two, three models uh, who were doing the best assignments. And then I did VJ and that's where uh, Vinod Chopra uh, also uh, wanted to cast me for Kareem and I began training under him and uh, we just hadn't signed in the dotted line and uh, then he said you know what I'm getting married right now so I'm going to put the film on hold for four five months and then post that you and uh, Bobby Diol will be in Kareem and I 
sang all the songs and uh, lip syncing and I did all the rehearsals, I learned all the dialogue. <laughs> And then I got a call from Mr. Guy's office and I was like, oh, I'm not getting this film, forget it. And uh, so this guy said, Mr. Guy would like to meet you tomorrow. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never went. Because I had heard that he had uh, tested a lot of uh, actors and um, even the Miss Universe and the Miss World. And I had no confidence. I was like, if they're in standard chance, there's no way. So I just didn't even go. And uh, mm. around lunch break, they called and they said, Mr. Guy is waiting for you in the office. We used to have those pagers, you know. There was no, uh, just like Mr. Kai waiting for you in office and where are you? So I went to a, I was in a studio and I went and I said that, you know, are you sure he wants to meet me? Like, you know, so they said, yeah, he's waiting. So I said, I don't want to insult because I'm going to be part of the industry. And later when I meet him at a party, he's going to say, oh God, there comes that snob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was literally dragging my feet. So huh. when I went there, I, obviously I didn't want the part because I was not getting the part. And throughout my interview with him, uh, I was going on in English. I was like, am I going to get the part? And then he said, show me some of your pictures. So I showed him pictures and he liked the look of uh, Kareeb actually. You know, the choti thing and all. He says, yeah, I want to be like this. test for And any other producer said, I don't know until I do it. After one month, I test for And don't meet anybody till then. Okay. Then I got caught. I was like, you know, I I don't understand why you're saying I can't meet any other producer or director. Mm. I, I might already be halfway into a film, you know. So, mm. can you test me tomorrow and tell me? So then he tested me the next day. And Pandri Dada, who just passed away very recently, he was my makeup artist. So, so, so many people become part of your uh, struggle. That day was a struggle for me because I had to be at uh, Vinodji's office at a certain time to uh, be there for a rehearsal. I also wanted to see whether I stood a chance since he was giving me a test. And uh, Mr. Ghai came very late. And you know, after that, my nervousness was out of the window and he was like, Hey, Dada I said, okay. <laughs> so I guess because there was no nervousness, I killed it. Because later Shah Rukh looked at, uh, looked at my film and everything and he says, you know, by far, I think your screen test was still better than your movie. <laughs> because <laughs> I did a better job yeah. in my screen test. Right, right. But I have to understand, after 2010, you took a sabbatical from your work. Was it a conscious decision because you wanted to give attention to your kids, uh, to your daughters at that point? Or then, I mean, At that time, it was very clear that if an actor is married, then there's no part for them in the industry, mostly. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people who uh, braved that uh, much earlier than us also, obviously, like Sharmila Ji and uh, uh, lots of them, Rekha Ji and Shabana Ji and all that, they continued with their uh, whatever. But just generally, it was like that, that, oh, now she's getting married. And, you know whether it, it was with me or whether it was with karishma or whether, like mostly it was considered like that that okay you know now it's time for them so i really didn't have any hope that but i was very keen to like start a family and i was in that zone so i was not thinking okay now what film do i do it was like no this is a great part of my life and yeah okay this is happening if something came along i did do shows i did do television uh, that uh, judging and things like that So I continued to do that and do the events and everything and the films never came. Some few little parts came here and there and then I said, no, not this. And then something nice comes probably I'll make time for it and do it. But yeah, I, can, I continued with this life that I had. And... I mean, apart from the pro- professional lulls, there were also a few personal lulls that not you have faced. I, I continue to have them. <laughs> But in which way have you been able to do it? Every time. Being a single parent is not easy. It was largely difficult for me because uh, I depend a lot. Obviously, I came back and moved in with my parents and you depend on your parents then. And uh, that was the time my mother was detected with Parkinson's and that was the time that she needed help and she could n- not be of that great a help in raising my child. So when I went out to do events, it was like leaving a toddler and leaving my mother who needed assistance as well so there was just my staff that i had to depend on yeah and, uh, so my dad had to leave his uh, uh, he he manufactures tea and he's from darjeeling he's been there all his life 
So my dad has made a huge sacrifice. So it was difficult because of that. But then I have a sister and uh, my sister has a child and my child are both the same age, four months apart. Right. right. So it almost became like the two of us for the parents and we were raising two children. She just moved That's out years back. But uh, if I may ask, does does it ever bother your daughter that she doesn't have a father? Does it ever? No, uh-huh. he's very much part of her life, and uh, yeah, she has his own equation uh, with him. And obviously, <laughs> she goes and visits him, and they go on holidays. Till she was about nine, I also went on vacations with uh, like them. Nine, yeah, we went on vacation. Uh, the last two years, I haven't been able to because mummy is a lot more uh, ill and it, for me, we've not been taking a long vacation. The last we took was two years ago to the US for a month. So I don't go but she's now big. Ever since she's 10, she's been going on her own. Yeah, so they talk every day and they Skype and they meet up and she goes, he lives in Bandra, it's not very far. So she, he's very Yeah, nice. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, she, that's lovely. That balance. Okay. Yeah. That balance. It takes a lot of will to create that balance also. Exactly. And if I say something terrible about him, it doesn't affect her. I was like, yeah, <laughs> and this. And she's like, why is a bit like this? How did you even tolerate him? So it's like that. So, yeah. Very sorted. Lastly, I want to know, if not an actor, if not Mahima Chaudhvi, the actress, what would you be? Oh, what I, was would very, you I was very ambitious. I came to Bombay at a time when not many people from Darjeeling were coming and it was my mother who said, just go. Mm. And my father said that I'm not going to support this, you know, especially films and all of that. And it was my mother. I think for a whole year, my father didn't even talk. Uh, and my father's a very gentle soul and he's very, like, he's, he's really gentle. Anybody who meets him loves him. And he was like so nasty during that one year when my mother took a stand and said that, you know, she's got a great uh, campaign and let us see she wants to uh, see what she can do with this and I was a very good student and my teacher said that oh we're expecting her to top the university in college why are you letting her go and glamour doesn't last forever and I took a chance and I came so I was a good student I was very diligent I yeah, I was very good in sports I was games captain so whatever opportunity I got I used to grab it I was like okay let me do this great let me do this great let me study hard let me come first and so I was all the time striving to do something. I would have been something. I would have been maybe, if I was in the banks, I would have tried and headed it. If I was in marketing, I would have, you know, I would have nailed it. So I didn't have like a genre that I had picked, but I knew whichever opportunity I got, I would have grabbed it with both hands. And that's, that's me. Even today, even today, there were no good films coming and I was like, yeah, I'll do events. And then, you know, everybody teases me as being the queen of events, and, but I just enjoy it. I love being amongst people, and you know, and, and no, but uh, but I'm sure now with this, uh, more and more opportunities will also come your way because the industry has opened up, and there are good roles, better roles today being offered. So okay. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I get lucky after a lockdown. Yeah, it's quite likely. I am hoping that you do because I would love to see yeah. you back on screen very very soon hopefully with something very good uh, so yeah thank you so much my mom it was a pleasure yeah. it was a pleasure thank you stay home so and stay much. safe